Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we've got a couple of news stories to get through in the world of tech. The first is concerning some leaked benchmarks for the upcoming GTX 1660 Ti, which is all but confirmed at this point by everyone but NVIDIA as we've seen leaked box art as well as cards. And now we have some actual benchmarks from the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark as well as the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark, which have been leaked by famed leaker Tom underscore Apisac. No, I didn't say Tom's ball sack. I said Tom's Tom underscore Apisac. He's been responsible for many leaks over the past few years, and he's pretty much always right. So we're going to be referring to those numbers. And also we've got an update on YouTube's copyright strike policy in the wake of everything that kind of happened last week with uh, Bit with Kyle and Review Tech USA and channels being copyright striked by The Verge and Vox Media. It looks like YouTube has actually made some updates to their policy, which brings some good things as well as some bad things that I do want to talk about because they are of particular interest to me and maybe to some of you out there as well. But we're going to start off with the graphics card news and taking a look at the GTX 1660 Ti leak benchmarks, which are rumored to be releasing this Friday. The 22nd, I haven't heard a single word yet on whether or not I'd be getting a sample. I wonder why that is. So taking a look at these benchmarks, the really the TLDR of it is, is that we are looking at a card that will put out GTX 1070 level performance for around $279. Obviously that price could be up or down by maybe 20, 30 bucks, maybe even $50. If you're going for an aftermarket card, maybe versus a more basic card or a small form factor GPU. So the price could vary there, but we're looking at relatively under $300 for these cards and GTX 1070 level performance. If we take a look at this graph over here, which was originally posted, as I said, by Twitter user Tom underscore Apisac, not Tom's Ballsack. It's over on videocards.com here for a little bit easier consumption. And we can see that it scored 5,000 on the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, which puts it, puts it just right ahead of the GTX 1070 and falling behind a card like the RTX 2060. And looking at the ashes of the singularity numbers, which were also posted by him, we could see that the GTX 1660 Ti gets a score of 4,800 on the Ashes of the Singularity on the crazy 1080p run of that. The previous one was 1440p, by the way. Uh, and again, yeah, this is just so on the Ashes of Singularity, right behind, right behind the GTX 1070, uh, but not as fast as an RTX 2060, which is, I think, about really what we expected of these cards. And I think for Sub $300 getting GTX 1070 level of performance is going to be really good. And I think this is going to be a good competitor for NVIDIA with cards like the RX 590, which recently got a refresh. Obviously, AMD doesn't really have too many other things to compete at that price point. They've got Vega 56 and 64, you know, which Vega 64 would be better than this. Uh, Radeon 7 is obviously like a double, double the price of this card, so it's not really in the same tier. And this would probably also compete with something like Navi, once those are eventually available, but we really don't know when those are going to be yet. That's been rumored that it might not even come until the end of 2019. It might have been delayed, but again, that's a rumor. And this leak, you know, as with any leak, I guess you should take it with a grain of salt. But as I said, this guy has usually been pretty reliable. He posted Radeon 7 leaks and other numbers that were all pretty much right on point. And yeah, he just has a long running history of posting solid information. So yeah, I would personally believe in these numbers, but it's really not that far fetched that it would be just around GTX 1070 performance. I think that's probably where most of, most of us expected this card to land. But let me know down in the comments below if this has enticed you, if you're considering picking up a 1660 Ti or you're gonna go AMD, going a little bit higher end. At least this is exciting, I think, for I mean, if you look at this card and having the 2060 out, this is more or less like the 50 Ti card, like a 1050 Ti, 950 Ti. And, you know, going from a 1050 Ti to the 1660 Ti, which I think is, the, I think this is kind of where that's supposed to fit. Um, it's a pretty decent step forward and doing something like 1070 performance at that price is, is pretty darn good. So I'm excited to see what this can do. And also maybe a 1660 will come out and that'll be like GTX 1060 performance. I think that's all good stuff. So I'm excited to see when these do finally release, but I don't think I'm going to have one for testing right at launch. Even if they, I'm, I'm also not sure if they're even making founder's edition uh, cards for this. It looks like, it seems like board partners are mainly handling the distribution on these. So that could be another reason why I haven't heard from NVIDIA on this. Um, variety of factors could come into play there, but we'll just have to wait and see. As I said, rumors are saying this Friday for 
the release. Now, next up, I do want to talk about YouTube a bit and the copyright strike system. As many of you probably know, if you're watching tech YouTubers, um, there was a big issue last week with Bitwit Kyle, uh, also uh, gaming and tech news channel Review Tech USA, who I've been subscribed to for many years. Uh, does really good commentaries over there, and he's a friend of the channel. So. He, uh, so these guys both got copyright striked for what is def what should definitely have fallen under fair use, and then um, Vox Media and Verge kind of backed off and kind of played the victim of this whole thing, but it just really shed light further on an issue that we have known to be an issue for many years now, and that is the outright abuse of the copyright strike system. So thankfully, YouTube has at least made a blog post, and they are going to be updating their policies when it does to come to the copyright strike system. So now rather than the first strike immediately penalizing your channel and you know removing things like the ability to live stream which it would have done in the past and with someone like Bitwit who streams every single week I believe on Tuesdays for Awesome Hardware with Paul from Paul's Hardware that would you know take out a decent chunk of his scheduled content. One video a week would have had to have changed. They probably would have had to have done the full thing over on Paul's Hardware's channel, which definitely would have impacted both of them. And with copyright strikes and how easy it is to do, pretty much anyone can throw a strike on anyone for any reason. And the way YouTube checks them is almost few and far between. They hardly ever check them at all unless a, an appeal is actually processed. And thankfully for Kyle, he is a partner with the Full Screen Network, someone who I am also partnered with, and they are actually really good about getting strikes and things like that removed, although they also then recently just did a whole flagging spree on videos that had kind of linked possibility to Linus Tech Tips, which Linus was not to blame for. It was Full Screen kind of doing it automatically, um, which is also a problem, and I don't agree with the way that they went about doing that. Um, but thankfully most of that stuff was released by them and Linus after, you know, some back and forth, but you can see how much this could impact people, um, you know, very, it could impact channels greatly in their ability to earn and really make a living. So the updates that's coming to this policy is first and foremost, which I think is a very good thing, is that if you do get a copyright strike for the very first time, it will just be a warning. There's not going to be any penalties to your YouTube channel whatsoever, which is a very good thing. I do think that that is important, although I do want to see some more transparency on this. Like if someone copyright strikes my channel and I get a warning for it and I appeal it, um, do I, and, and let's say I win that appeal, do I get reset and get another warning again? Because I didn't, you know, it wasn't the first time. And also how far apart do we get between these warnings? Because I had a copyright strike on my channel way back when I first started YouTube, like 2011, 2012. I think I used like a minute of like a licensed Ozzy Osbourne song or something like that. This was like, like I said, literally when I first started YouTube, I had like 10 subscribers at this point. I wasn't trying to make a living from it. I just made like a music montage of a PC build and I wanted it to, to, to sound and look cool. And I used a licensed song, something I shouldn't have done. But at the time, it wasn't really something I was thinking about. And I got a strike for it. And for six months, um, you know, they removed the, they, I couldn't like make thumbnails or m earn money from YouTube, which I wasn't really earning at that time anyway. So I didn't really care about it. So for someone like me, where it's been like eight years since that happened, do I get a warning now or do I immediately get a copyright strike? Because when you do get a copyright strike, let's say when that warning is finally gone, I think that the penalties that they are putting out are much, much harsher than what they previously had. So the first strike will actually result in a one week freeze on your channel. So for one week, you cannot upload at all, which was not involved in the original copyright strikes in any way for the first strike. You would remove the ability to the, 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 to live stream and the strike would then disappear from your channel. I believe it was after six months, if I'm not mistaken. That's how it was back in 2011 anyway. Um, but now it's going to be 90 days. So if you get a strike, you lose the ability to upload anything. You can't live stream and you can't do really anything on your channel, public post. I don't even know if you can reply to comments in that week and the strike will be removed after 90 days. The second strike in any 90 day period will result in a two week freeze and your ability to upload any new content to YouTube. So that's two weeks. This stuff can impact your channel heavily. Obviously, if you're falling into a situation where you're getting one and two strikes, you're probably messing up somewhere. Um, even if someone is, you know, maybe abusing the system, hopefully you could get the first one appealed before the second one, you know, comes into play. But yeah, just I would if you are really messing up that to that at that point, then OK, you probably should be penalized but the first time you know if it could just be an honest mistake and losing the ability to upload for a week can hurt you a lot especially in today's youtube world with the algorithm and how 
imperative it is to be uploading almost to be uploaded actually daily. You need to be uploading daily to remain relevant on YouTube and stay in the recommended feeds for the YouTube algorithm. Um, and taking a week off for a vacation or something like that can hurt your channel quite a bit in terms of it actually getting recommended to other people. And then the third strike in any day in any 90 day period will result in a channel termination. So it's still a three strikes and you're out system. Um, you know, so I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this down in the comments below as well, especially if you are a YouTuber. What do you think about the updates to the system? So I think there's some good and bad here. I think it's really good that they are implementing a warning system, but it's also kind of harsh that if you get one strike, you lose the ability to upload it all for an entire week, which can hurt your channel, let alone losing it for two weeks if you got two strikes in a 90-day period. And, you know, some content creators just might fall victim more than others to... Um, you know, false claims and things like that. And it's just going to be really whether or not you got a good MCN that can help argue this stuff. And for some channels that aren't with MCNs, it can be even more difficult to be able to dispute these claims and get them removed in a timely manner. So let me know your thoughts. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you have been here for a while, you can always ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a moment of content as soon as it goes up live here on the channel. And I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Ta-ra.